Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. This is another short, short story of the type that's in my book, Soloists, which is subtitled uh, Short, Short Stories of Introverts and Outsiders Facing a Dilemma. This one is called An Aspiring Campaign Manager. Colin was running for student body vice president. Behind the curtain of the college's auditorium, Colin begged his mom, I can't do this. You're the politician. You know how to BS them without their knowing. You're an actress. I'm a dick. She literally had to push him onto the stage, and he delivered his memorized speech. He tried to build emotionality like Martin Luther King did in the I Have a Dream speech, but Colin is no MLK. The audience's applause was perfunctory. Colin had been encouraged to go into politics, not just by his mom, who was a state senator, but because he majored in poli-sci. He remembered a professor who said, yes, politics is ugly, and in the cosmic scheme, it should be ignored, but in the real world, government is where the power is. But Colin's inept speech confirmed that he needed to be behind the scenes. So he applied for dozens of jobs on political campaigns, but the best he could get was a minimum wage temp gig as a, quote, community organizer, which was puffed up language for telemarketer, which was also wordsmithed as phone banking, plus door-to-door -door canvasser and swing precincts. Mainly, Colin got door slams and hang-ups. Not only was the job frustrating, at minimum wage he couldn't afford rent and so had to live with his mother. He asked the campaign manager for a raise. Our candidate always preaches for a living wage, yet you're paying me minimum wage. The boss required, re replied, You're lucky we are paid at all. Millions of people are eager to volunteer. Colin thought, I thought our party was against Darwinian survival of the fittest. So Colin continued to live at home, couldn't motivate himself to look for another job, and was smoking more weed. But when his mother laughed on seeing him bring home a less than prepossessing date, he knew he had to find a better paying job so he could afford to move out. But how can I prevail over the zillion other wannabes? He decided to try to get someone to run for town council and offer to be the campaign manager for free. He asked all his friends and his parents' friends, but got nowhere. But then, recognizing from his mom the importance of politicians being good actors and today's valorizing of disability, he googled to find deaf actresses who played the deaf woman in the play Children of a Lesser God. And he found three. One never responded. One emailed that she was too busy and lived too far away. But he convinced the third person, Felicia Jones, an actor in amateur theater. She said, I don't want to be in politics, but I'll run because it sounds fun. And if I'm elected, I can say that I can't take office because... I realize I need to spend more time with my family. Colin agreed to the deal. His next move was to contact his political marketing professor, who agreed to craft the campaign slogan, Forward with Felicia, and created the stump speech. She explained to Colin, It has to be slam dunks in the polling, yet unobjectionable to moderates. The speech? Stand with me as we fight for a woman's right to choose. Stand with me as we fight for clean air and water. Stand with me as we fight for better education for our children, our future. I am here for all people, white as well as people of color, straight as well as gay, all of us, all in, together. As the Constitution says, we the people. She explained to Colin, I included that as the punchline to neutralize people from the other party. They like long-standing institutions. We'll never get them to vote for our candidate, but it's a legal way to suppress people from the opposing party. She added, and we can increase turnout disproportionately for our candidate if we climb onto the media coattails. Felicia keeps slamming some politician from the other party that the media has turned into a boogeyman. No surprise, the media loved Felicia, and when she won, it gushed. For example, the page one story in the local newspaper sounded more like an editorial. Felicia not only is the first deaf member of the town council, she is a progressive yet moderate voice, Voter Mary Johnson said, Felicia will serve us well. Only days later, Colin got a call from a state senator facing a re-election challenge. She said, to run our six-month campaign, I can offer you $50,000. Even though Colin was thrilled with that, he sensed he could squeeze more, so he played poker. 
I need 70000 And she agreed. Whereupon he texted his mom, I got 70 k I'm moving out. Anyway, that story is called An Aspiring Campaign Manager. Uh, as I said, it's a kind of story that's in my, my new book, Soloists. I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down on this, uh, this video. And um, I look forward to your comments and especially like it if you hit the share button below. Share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to this channel. The subscribe button is above there. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.